All right, this was fun. DHL dropped a little package on my door. This is the Clockwork DevTerm A06. Now it's, uh, it's important to note that while Clockwork Pi provided this device to me for free, again, thank you so much, I am under no obligation. They've asked me to say nothing in particular. So these thoughts will be my own and they will not be influenced by Clockwork Pi. For today, we are just simply going to unbox this thing. We are going to assemble it because that is part of the fun. And then we're gonna check it out. Now, before I get started, and as I always say, there is a companion blog post for this video that has all the links you need, plus additional information not covered in this video. Make sure you check out the companion blog post. You can find a link to that companion blog, blog post in the video description down below. Hey, and before I begin, I also want to thank my producers. They're right here. And I also want to thank my new executive producers that are right here. They have all joined the Retro Combs channel using Buy Me A Coffee at a specific level. There are lots of different levels and they're all Commodore computer inspired. You're going to want to check it out. So if you're not familiar with this device, just exactly what is the Clockwork Pi dev term? Well, per Clockwork Pi, the dev term is a postmodern digital minimalist lifestyle. The A5 notebook size integrates complete PC functions with a retro futurism design, a 6.8 inch ultra wide screen, classic QWERTY keyboard, necessary interfaces, high speed wireless, long battery life, and even includes a practical thermal printer. Check it out. Actually, this is just the roll, the printer's inside. We'll talk about that later. No matter where you are, the dev term brings you a focused and immersive experience. It provides you with an anywhere door escape for distraction-free typing and deep, deep thinking, thinking, deep thinking, thinking, and deep thinking. Now, as I mentioned, there are various models of the dev term, and I was fortunate enough to be sent the A06. Let's talk about the specifications of this device. So it includes the Clockwork Pi version 3.14 mainboard, the A06 core module, which is an ARM 64-bit dual-core Cortex-A72 plus quad-core Cortex-A53 Mali T864 and four gigabytes of LPDDR4 RAM. That's a lot of horsepower in this little device. My version also includes the external module that adds additional ports. The 6.86 inch IPS screen module, the Clockwork 65% keyboard, so the keyboard is 65% smaller than a full size keyboard. We'll talk about that keyboard later. Battery module, batteries not included. Dual speakers, and they're really interesting. 58 millimeter, 200 DPI thermal printer component, shells and bracket system, which is very unique, and a 32 gigabyte SD card with the Clockwork operating system. If we take a look around the dev term, you'll see that we have some ports. The ports that we have include a USB port right there, USB-C. Here we have a micro HDMI for video out. We have a headphone jack for audio out. On the front, we have our power right here with a built-in LED. We also have our SD card that installs here with the operating system. Come on over to the right side here. And you find that we have two more additional USB ports. And finally, on the back, we have an expansion port, which right now is used for the thermal printer. Now, one of the features that's touted as part of the dev term is the assembly. You're supposed to have as much fun assembling this device as you do using it. And it's all snap fit, just like a Bondi model or a snap type model. It just all fits together nicely. Let's go ahead and take a look at my assembly. Okay, let's get this thing out of the box. First of all, it looks like it had a rough trip from China. See these bruised box corners? Now the QR code on the front should take you to a website. Unfortunately, it does not. Give it a shot yourself and see where it takes you. If you shake the box softly, it sounds like a model because you know, it is a model, but with electrical components inside. Now I noticed when I shake my box, it sounds like there's dirt inside the box. We'll have to see what that is when we open it. 
Ah, I see what's happened here. The sound we hear are plastic bits that have come from one of the crushed corners of the box. Opening the box reveals the dev term parts. Check it out. They look just like a model kit that you could buy at a hobby store. You see it's complete with the familiar plastic runners or sprues, and it feels like a snap type model, which it is advertised to be similar to. The set includes two trays full of components. Let's take a look at the first tray. This first slot includes the battery cover, two port covers with identifications, and another cover for the printer slot. On the top right hand corner is a small baggie with three machine screws. I don't want to lose those. Let's take a look and see what's in the second tray. There's the IPS panel and it has a dent. I hope that doesn't prove to be an issue during assembly. To the left of the display is the rechargeable battery module. The dev term doesn't use standard AA or AAA batteries. I'll discuss batteries a little bit later. Below the charger is an expansion port that includes a cooling fan, camera ribbon connector, printer ribbon connector, micro USB port, and two USB ports. On the reverse are two touch connectors for left and right speakers. Next is the display ribbon cable and a 16 gigabyte micro SD card. The operating system is installed on the micro SD card. In the middle of the tray and to the right is the main CPU module. To the right of the main tray is the Core A06 processor. In the bottom row and to the left is a radio antenna for both Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. Hey, remember those speaker connectors? They are next to the antenna and host these two small rectangular speakers. I've never seen speakers in this form factor and I'm really curious as to how they'll perform. The next to the last item is the thermal printer module. That's really a cool retro touch to include that thermal printer. And it's one of the features I am most looking forward to trying. Finally, the 65% keyboard includes a built-in game controller and a rollerball for mouse control. Below the spacebar are three mouse buttons, and you can press the rollerball to activate a left mouse click. So there's all the parts for our dev term. Let's break all the parts off the sprues, let's gather all of our parts, and let's put the dev term together. To assemble, I'll follow these black and white instructions very closely. They're actually quite good. Assembly begins with a click of the screen in the plastic holder. Make sure the connector is aligned correctly, and I'm leaving the protector on until the last minute. The main board is next and uses holes from the frames containing the connectors. Once the main board is located, use the connectors to hold it into place. The connection is pretty solid. Connecting the screen to the main board was worrisome. The ribbon cable is tiny and delicate. The manual even provides a strong warning. The cable bows and I hope it is located properly. I'll know the first time I turn it on. With the main board in place, I can now install the core. Similar to SIM memory modules, you slide it in at an angle and then slowly lower it until it clicks under the holders. For this step, you do need a small Phillips screwdriver. Make sure to take off the gold plastic screw receiver covers. For radio connections for Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, the dev term does come with an antenna module. The installation includes a connector on the main board that clicks, followed by the removal of adhesive protection to stick the antenna against the side of the inner mounting plate. 
Now I get to install those fancy snazzy speakers. We peel off the adhesive and stick them into their carriers, being very careful to place the connectors outward. Next thing we're going to do is mount the external module. We install this by connecting it to the port on the core module. Slide it in at an angle, lower it, and then make sure you put the connectors in to hold down the board. If you don't, it'll flop up. All right, let's get that cool thermal printer assembled next. The first thing we want to do is put the roller into the printer assembly, snap that assembly onto the plastic holder, and then lower it onto the bottom tray. Finally, we're going to want to connect the ribbon cable to the external module with the ribbon cable connector. Be very careful when you close that connector down with a little snap. Now you also need to mount these standoffs to support the upper case. The next thing we want to do is mount the battery module. This is a simple case of simply dropping the module onto these four pins. Once it's seated properly, the pogo pins will seat. There's no cables that you need to connect. And once again, we have four standoffs that we need to connect. Let's take some time to talk about the batteries that are going to go into this battery slot. As I mentioned, batteries are not included with the dev term. And you need a non-standard battery, the 18650, which looks like an oversized AA battery. They are rechargeable, and the dev term does include circuitry to recharge installed batteries. I purchased the Maxion Universal Smart Charger 9900 milliamp hour 18650 battery, rechargeable batteries, universal, compatible, LCD display, speedy smart charger with nickel metal hydride, nickel metal cadmium AA, AA, AAA, lithium battery. That's the real listing in Amazon. You're not going to remember any of that, so go to the companion blog post, link in the video description below. All right, back to our assembly. Let's go ahead and mount the back shell. So we're going to drop everything we've done so far into the back shell or the bottom if you lay it on your table. Once we do that, we'll put these connector panels in as well as the transparent LED button. Now let's mount the keyboard. Again, it uses pogo plugs. We simply drop the keyboard on top of the assembly and the pogo plugs make the connection. Now we're getting close to the end. Let's mount the front shell. Now this was very tricky. You've got to align it just right on the clips on the front, push it, have to apply a little back pressure to the back to get it on there, but make sure it's got a seam all the way around that is tight and connected. It'll take you a few tries to get this. I'm almost positive. But once you do, you want to assemble your connector wheels, put those on and screw those on to hold the whole thing together. Yes, the whole thing is held together by these two simple little wheels. Genius. Last thing we want to do is mount the port cover on the back of the device. This is pretty easy. You just simply find the little connectors and snap it into place and then fold it up until you hear a click. Now at this point, you probably want to drop your batteries in and throw on the cover. Let's insert that micro SD card and power up. So before we turn it on, I want to talk a little bit about the keyboard briefly. Let's take a little tour of the keyboard. You can see we have our regular alphanumeric keys here. We have our space bar here, but below the space bar, you see three additional buttons. These are our mouse buttons, left, center, and right. We also have the wheel right here, or the ball, the uh, mouse ball here. If you click down, you get a click, and that will activate the left mouse button. We also have this game control pad here, as well as controller buttons. So you could play games with this device like this. And of course, we also have our regular cursor keys here. Function keys are also along the numeric keys here. Just hold down function, tap a button, and there's your function key. Okay, let me go ahead and show you how to install the thermal printer. First thing we need to do is drop our port cover here that we assembled earlier. We take the roll of paper inside. Let me go ahead and pull off the cover here. You'll see here's the roller for the paper. One of the things I love about thermal printers is there's no ink. You don't have to worry about ink. And inside you just drop the roll. There is no bar or anything. You just drop the roll right in and you put it in. Now it does tell you which side needs to be up. So you want the paper to roll outward like this. 
we come in here and I'm going to go ahead and pull just a little bit out and I'm going to clip this in and now it's clipped into place and we are ready to print. So let me tell you about the first time I turned on the dev term. So I hit the power button, turned it on and it looked like this. Yeah, just like that. Uh, nothing, no, nothing on the screen. However, lights were lighting, fans were running, everything appeared to be working, but nothing was happening here. So what did I do? I, I probably took the wrong, long way around to troubleshoot this, but I immediately went for the worst case scenario. I broke it all down and I thought maybe the ribbon cable wasn't in place. I reseated it several times thinking that that would correct the issue. It did not. The LCD still wasn't lighting. The panel itself was fine. The LCD panel was fine. I grabbed a flashlight, put it right next to it, and I could see that there was something on the panel. Turns out that the backlit LEDs wasn't working. Well, that's a problem because that's all integrated into the whole LCD unit. So I broke down the unit completely to see if I could figure out what was going on. I found a ribbon cable that connected from the LCD controller to the LEDs and noticed that it was cut. Evidently in manufacturing, it got bent and split. So the challenge was on. Could I fix this myself? Before I tried to fix it, I did send Alex over at Clockwork an email and said, hey, I think we've got an issue. I sent him a picture, showed the split. He responded almost immediately and said, got another one coming your way. However, it's gonna be a while. And I thought, it may be a while, but I'm gonna keep working with this one. This, this LCD panel is toast. The worst I can do is make it not work and it already doesn't work. So what I did was try to fix it myself. Now, all of this just speaks to the hackability and the opportunity for the user to be able to modify this device. So just keep that in mind. So what I did is I broke again down the whole components all down to its, its individual parts. I took an X-Acto knife and I started to scrape off of the ribbon cable, the plastic covering until I had enough of it exposed that I could see it. Then I took an ohm meter, ran lines across the controller board and the ribbon cable removing more and more plastic until I got a circuit. Once I had a circuit, I knew I had enough of the connector that I could also solder a small little wire from the power of the LED to the LED controller board. And after about five minutes, I was able to get this hacky thing put together. Now, because this wire was thicker than the whole assembly itself almost, I couldn't put the entire assembly back together. I had to leave one of the frames off. However, I dropped it into place connected everything, turned it on, and guess what happened? That, but only for about 10 seconds, and then the backlight fired up. It worked. So I was able to fix it to the point where it works, and what you're seeing now is my fixed version until the new LCD panel is delivered from Clockwork, which, by the way, is on its way. Big shout out to Clockwork for getting back to me quickly and getting that on its way, but the good news is I do have a working model because I was able to hack at this to make it work. Okay, let's go ahead and turn on the dev term. Now I am running this with batteries. All right, and after a little terminal action there, we see that the GUI will boot. All right, once it's booted up, you'll notice we have this little itty bitty cursor and we move that around with this ball right here. You can modify the setting to make that a little bit faster, but it does take several swipes to get across the screen. And uh, this should look very familiar to anybody who's used Ubuntu and XFCE. You can see all of our menus here. It's a little hard to see here because of the lighting. Uh, we will get a better look at that in a future video. But uh, if we go up here, we can see we do have our menu right here, our application menu. See all those menu options. And what I'm gonna do is go ahead and bring up a web browser. And let's see, what site should we visit? Of course, we should visit www.stephencombs.com. Of course, what else would we? And then uh, I can hit uh, F11 here. That'll give that full screen. And then what I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna right click on this and I'm gonna say, uh, let's see, let's open that image in a new tab. Okay, now that I have it in the new tab, what do you say we try and print that image? Let's go over here. Let's go to print. 
And of course, we're going to be printing to the thermal printer. And you can see right here, it says dev term printer and we get some information. This is what it's going to look like. This is the little preview and let's go to print and keep our fingers crossed. Go ahead and move this down so you can keep an eye on it. You can hear that familiar thermal printer sound. Reminds me of a little mini dot matrix printer from the 80s. Now it's definitely not the fastest thing in the world. You're going to want to take your time and make sure you have plenty of time when you're printing. And there we go. We have our print. I'm going to go ahead and pull this out a little bit here and tear that right off with the little bar that it has to help that. And there you go. Uh, it is as expected. We are not going to get just a great print here. We are. Uh, it's going to be exactly what you would expect. Let's turn some light on here so you can see it. And uh, you see, it's not bad. Uh, I've actually had better prints. And uh, I'm sure with some time, I'll figure out how to get better prints out of this. But uh, really, though, how cool is that? Now, I understand we can get this thermal printer paper as sticker material. So you would be able to take that and peel that off. But there you go. There's your example of a print from the Clockwork Pi dev term. That is just pretty, pretty cool. All right, let's go ahead and close this. And you can see it's fairly responsive. It, there's not a lot of lag here. And this is, uh, again, I'm using Chromium, not Chrome, but Chromium. Uh, and you can see we have all the menus, everything here. And again, this screen might seem a little constricting, but there are great reasons to have that that we'll explore later. So there you have it. There is your first look at the Clockwork Pi Dev Term. And again, we'll take a much longer and deeper dive later with some future videos. Okay, so what are my initial thoughts? And again, this is not a review of the dev term by Clockwork Pi. This is just my quick thoughts of putting this together uh, and what's going on. Well, despite the, the issue with the LCD panel, because I'm just gonna give that a wash. I mean, that's gonna happen. You're gonna have manufacturing errors and who knows? Could I have possibly broken that cable when I was assembling it? I don't think I did because I was very careful and uh, I would be really surprised if I did. However, there is that distinct possibility. But generally, this is just poss quite possibly one of the coolest little devices that you could get. If, if you are into these mini terms, these handheld terminals, and I've been into them all the way since the pocket chip, uh, this is really great. And this is one that you can actually do things on. I'm not going to tell you what things you can do on this just yet. You're going to have to stay tuned, like and subscribe to find out what you can do. But I will give you a little hint. I can make this do a lot of the things that this will do and more. So I've got lots of projects planned on this. Next time, what we'll do is we will take a look a little bit deeper into the OS and some of the things you can do with the operating system. It is Ubuntu based. So we should be able to do quite a bit in here with anything that is Debian based with Linux. Now, I also want to, again, compare it to the Model 100. We'll take some time to do that. I also have some ideas to use the dev term as the ultimate retro computing portable. Can we play retro games on this? Well, it is designed for that. So we are going to set that up and get that going at some point. And I'll develop some other cool, unique experiments with the dev term. Now, I don't guarantee I'll get all of these working. I don't know how I'll be sharing these. Some of these may be during a live stream. Some of them may be prepared. So you're definitely going to want to stay tuned. Do you have a Clockwork Pi dev term? If you do, leave a comment. Let me know how you're using it. The rumor is people have been buying these and they just end up sitting on a shelf. Mine is not going to do that. We are going to figure out how to use it, play with it, explore it, do more with it. So I'd love to have your ideas. So at this time, nothing else to say but Retrocombs out.